Baseball is back. Well, not big league baseball yet. Collegiate baseball. This past weekend was opening weekend, and for those of you who don't know, I work in collegiate baseball for Penn State, and with the start of the season comes a lot of time and energy put towards scouting reports. Now, we've done a few videos and blog posts in the past about what makes good scouting reports. But the cool thing about it is each year, these reports get tweaked just a little bit, whether that's due to new technology or just new ideas. So in today's video, we are going to cover why we make scouting reports, what they generally look like, as well as how we make them by covering the various companies that provide us with the most up-to-date stats and video at the college level. First, we will start with the why. Why do we need scouting reports? At the college level, we can really break down the way we use technology into two separate bins, the fall, or our off-season, in the spring, when we compete. In the fall, we get a chance to see what our guys can do by working on both our pitchers and hitters determining what areas they need to improve on to get better. To do so, we use a lot of technology that has been discussed on the channel before. Trackman, Rapsodo, Edutronic, Bat Sensors, and a whole bunch more. Pretty much, we consider the fall a time where we put a lot more energy into the development of our players. And for the most part, that requires us to look internally to what each player could improve. On the flip side, we have our season. This is when our guys get to go out and show what they've got. During the season, there is only one goal, and that is to win. Yes, we still utilize data to make sure we're trending in the right direction when it comes to making good decisions at the plate or that our pitches are moving the way we want them to, but mostly we're set on doing what we can to win. This doesn't mean we won't change some things if things aren't going well for one of our guys. It simply means that our use of data for the most part changes to look at something else to give our guys an edge, that being opponent scouting reports. Utilizing these reports to look externally on the flaws other players or teams have allows us to gain a slight edge when it comes to in-game decision making. At the very least, it gives our guys some confidence knowing that we've done our homework on the team that we're playing each given day. So that's why, let's talk a little bit more in depth on what these scouting reports look like. When it comes to our reports, we have two separate versions, the team reports and the individual reports. The team reports are more of a general look at the team we are facing, a snapshot of all of the players with their stats, tendencies, and things like any notes we have on their sign systems. These reports are generally a single page, perhaps front and back, that include a little bit about every player, and it may look something like this. For our individual reports, we get to dive more in depth to what that player does individually on the mound or at the plate. This information could look like their advanced stats, splits against lefties and righties, where their hot and cold zones are, and their tendencies of what pitches they like to throw and when, or what pitches they may swing at and when. The idea isn't necessarily to look at all of this information, it's to determine what we need to do to expose that player's weaknesses. Now, this isn't the video to dive into exactly what those stats and metrics are. We've already done that in a few other videos and blog posts, all of which will be linked down below in the description if you want to do some more research on this topic. Today, we are going to focus more on the how we generate these reports. So, how do we make a quality report? To do this, we invest a good amount in the top of the line systems for acquiring video and data from all other teams around the league. The most popular system at our level is going to be Synergy. Synergy is a video and data system where teams are required to upload video of their own games in order to gain access to all other teams' video. Along the side here, we have tons of filters, so if we wanted to know how a certain pitcher performed against left-handed hitters with a runner on first base when he's behind in the count, we could do that. And not only do we get to see a heat map and spray chart of where those balls ended up, but we also have a few charts on the bottom to tell us more about the results that have occurred in any given situation. On top of that, if we click this little play button up here, we can watch all of the video clips that match our filtered criteria. This is super useful when preparing for an opponent, as you can begin to see tendencies in video that you may not have been able to pick up just looking at the numbers. Synergy is most useful as a source to watch a video, and in the past we have had our student managers manually input some of this information into our scouting reports. The only issue with this app is that it is manually tagged by other individuals watching these games, meaning the locations and spray chart are going to be generally accurate, but not as perfect as it could be utilizing systems like TrackMan. So our next step for scouting is looking into the TrackMan team portal. This app allows us to dive into each pitcher's numbers. If they've pitched in a college game before on a TrackMan, we have access to their numbers here. Some of this information is the same as what we can find on Synergy, but what I really like to focus on here is a player's metrics. What's the spin rate on this pitcher's fastball, and how does it move? What about his other pitches? Exactly how fast does he throw, each of those pitches at, and to where in the zone? TrackMan has specific answers for all of those. For hitters, where do they do damage? 
To answer that question, we can look at their average exit velocity by zone, then on the flip side, where do they swing and miss a lot? And using this information in combination with the synergy data we have, we're able to gain a really good understanding of what makes each player tick. And in an understanding that, we can now game plan to attack his weaknesses and avoid his strengths. Synergy is our number one place for video. Then TrackMan is our number one place for data. And as I said, prior to this year, we had individuals manually inputting all of this information into one place to generate our reports. But there's a new app in town that takes the best of both worlds when it comes to video and data. That app is True Media, a software used for years now across Major and Minor League Baseball. This year, it was introduced at the college level, and boy were we quick to jump on it here. True Media is literally the best of both worlds, as it takes video and data from any game that we have on Synergy, and pairs it with any game that we have on TrackMan, and puts it all into one place. Here, we have access to the same number of filters, if not more, to sort our video and data and the output of these items includes interactable visuals and changeable tables to show us anything that you could ever imagine. On top of that, TrueMedia has a custom reports page where you can create a template for anything you'd like to know on a game-by-game -game basis, and it allows you to, at the click of a button, have the entirety of a team filled out in seconds. This is a task that used to take several people several hours to do. This is not in any way sponsored by any of these companies, but I do highly recommend looking into each and every one of them if you're interested in upping your scouting game wherever you may be. Now, I know we kind of breezed through each of those pieces of technology pretty quickly. The idea was to show you what they were capable of. If you'd like me to do a more in-depth dive into any of these apps, leave a comment which you'd like to see and why down below. So what are the main takeaways from all of this? The goal of playing this game is to win and having information like what a pitcher typically throws in each count is helpful when it comes to preparing for your opponent. And since I started in the game, scouting has come a long way. My first year at Iowa, we had games streamed onto a laptop with a video camera pointing at that laptop while we tagged those games in bats to try and get some video and data on the teams we were going to play. Although this didn't provide us with seasons worth of information like we have now, it did give us a little bit more information than other teams may have had access to, which increased our odds of winning even if just slightly. The important part about this is distributing it the right way to our players. Everyone doesn't have to know every single stat that you've gathered on every single guy. The message we like to send to our players is that utilizing scouting reports is a lot like playing blackjack. Your best odds of winning are to play by the book. So when you've been dealt a 16 and the dealer is showing a 7 and above, you hit every time. Although you may bust that hand a good amount of the time, playing by the book is rewarding in the long run and so is utilizing this type of data. Our reports may say that he's never thrown anything but a fastball in a certain count, and you may be the first person ever to see a breaking ball that day. So what? Swing like you're getting a fastball because that is the most likely outcome based on his past performance, and nobody's going to question you if you swing over that breaking ball. For that pitch, you may have lost due to our information, but in the long run, we will win a lot more pitches than we lose. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.